Hey, hell of a year, man. Hell of a year, man. With their losses in the conference championships, the Super Bowl dreams of the Lions and Ravens have come to an end. But their seasons aren't over. They'll meet in Miami to determine this year's third place team. Okay, not really. But half a century ago, this is how things were done. The NFL's third annual playoff bowl pits the second place finishers, the Detroit Lions and the Pittsburgh Steelers against each other. Today's game pits the Green Bay Packers, representing the Western Conference of the NFL, against the Eastern Conference runner-up, the St. Louis Cardinals. From 1960 to 1969, the playoff bowl was a game between the third and fourth place teams in the NFL to determine who came third. Usually occurred the week after the championship game. It came about, honestly, as part of the NFL's battle with the AFL. They were just looking for extra content, extra games to get on TV. Not much like they've done today. The draft is an event. The combine is an event. Well, back then, they were looking for new events. Let's create a new game. It's the playoff bowl. It's played in Miami. So, weather's nice. Just to go to Miami was a thrill. You went down to bask in the sun and play in a game that didn't mean anything. Florida welcomes the National Football League for a week of fun in the sun, centered around the 1965 playoff bowl. Pete Rozelle is approaching his peak as commissioner, and he is a public relations wizard. Let's promote this. Why not add golf tournaments? The spotlight focuses on the Hollywood Beach Golf Club, the headquarters and site of the fifth annual National Football League Golf Tournament. Zeke Bratkowski is shooting for his third player's crown. Alex Webster slices one. Tennis tournaments. John Brody of the San Francisco 49ers and his wife Nancy work out the winter kinks on the courts. Despite all the fun in the sun, players and media tended to see the playoff bowl in a harsh light. It was absolutely a, this is not a very pleasant thing to say, but a nothing game. I've heard the term loser's bowl, I've heard runner-up bowl, I've heard second place bowl. We call it the toilet bowl. The man who you can always quote, St. Vincent Lombardi, calls it a hinky-dink game for hinky-dink players in a hinky-dink stadium. Lombardi's hatred of the playoff bowl was deep enough to be printed in a full-page ad in the Wall Street Journal. His Packers played in the game in 1963 and 64, the years separating his first two championship teams and his later three-peat. That is just terrible. For Lombardi, a trip to Florida represented failure, but also an extra chance to evaluate what he had and what he needed to get back on top. In 1964, his eye was on two players, including veteran cornerback Jesse Whittington, who was beaten early in the game. Jesse's at the end of the line. This allowed Lombardi to give Doug Hart a chance at right corner. When the Packers win the title in 1965, Doug Hart is an excellent right corner. Intercepted by Doug Hart in the Packer 37. Given the chance to start, rookie linebacker Gene Breen had a quiet playoff bowl. Lombardi soon traded him, clearing the way for a future Hall of Famer. In 1965, Dave Robinson enters the starting lineup and plays spectacular, strong, dedicated football. So in that sense, Vince got something good out of the hinky dink bowl. Lombardi may have wanted to be anywhere else, but fans flocked to the Orange Bowl. They didn't care that we called it a toilet bowl. They didn't care that we only came down as second place teams. The league goes, ooh, we like Miami. It's been good to us. Let's continue to be good to them. The NFL put Super Bowl II in Miami, and it was Lombardi who was carried off that hinky dink field, a world champion. It was his last moment as Packers coach. And it was the first of 11 Super Bowls played in South Florida. Back to throw Montana. Stepped up throws. Touchdown! The playoff bowl helped prove Miami could host pro football's biggest game. And also a team of its own. 
The best thing that happened to Miami was to end up with the Dolphins. And I think we helped that happen. Watch that halfback pass if he's in that two-back spot, Manny! The playoff bowl had no stakes. That meant there was no better place to experiment. In 1966, NFL Films put a microphone on the Eagles' Joku Herrick. And for the first time, the world heard what a head coach sounds like on a sideline. Come on. That was a good call. He just overthrew the guy. Ask him if that looked good. He just overthrew him. Boy, that, the gears in that guy's mind didn't mesh for a long time, I'll tell you that. It's a moment that's led to nearly six decades of classic sound bites. Come on, Lenny. Pump it in there, baby. Just keep matriculating the ball down the field, boys. This is the NFL, which stands for not for long when you make them calls. Oh! Oh! <laughs> the playoff bowl didn't change the course of football history, more like gave it a nudge. And by the end of the 60s, the NFL nudged it towards history's dustbin. As the AFL and the NFL merge, the playoffs begin to expand. We got enough playoff games now leading to the Super Bowl. We don't need to have the second place teams playing down there. Can you imagine that happening today? If you lost the NFC Championship and the next week you had to go play? Yeah, that's that's kind of crazy. I'm not going to lie. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how they did that back then. Motivation. Yeah, I would kind of be checked out mentally. Uh, I mean, if we had to, you had to, but I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't really know about that. <laughs> Today's players sound as ambivalent about a playoff bowl as those who actually had to play in one. Roger Brown knew that feeling well. In his 10-year career, he played in five without ever making it to a title game. Play action, play action, play action. I didn't like going five times. I wanted to be in a championship game, but I got money out of that game. So, hey, it wasn't the worst day of my life. That was out of the bucket. Yeah. Too bad. Uh, good, good luck to you. Thank you a lot. 